Welcome to the third video on object-oriented programming in Python. In the last video, we discussed class and instance attributes. Those attributes were simple data attributes, which we used to store integer or string values. In this video, we will look into callable attributes, that is, functions. Let's look at a code example. We are only interested in the function attributes in this video. I'm showing two other class attributes A and B, before and after the say hello function just to provide a better mental model that all the three are at the same level. That is, all of them are class attributes. If you inspect this class's dictionary, you will see entries for all three class attributes. The only difference is the type of their values. A is an integer object, B is a string object, and say hello is a function object. Note that declaring a class creates its namespace. So, whatever attributes you define inside a class, cannot be accessed directly outside the class. You may access the class attributes using the class itself. Notice how similar this is to modules. The extra step required is importing the module so that we will have a handle to the module in our current namespace. Then we call the function defined inside the module through that handle. I will make a separate video on the class's scope later. If you call this function using the class, it works fine. We know that we can access class attributes through the instances of the class too. So let's try creating an object and call the function using that object. That didn't work, Python raised an exception. It says our function say hello takes zero positional arguments, which is true. It also says one argument was given when we called the function using the object, even though we didn't pass any. This is something Python does automatically. When we call the function using parentheses, a new object is created in memory. This object is also known as an instance of the class. Variable name obj will be a pointer or reference to that object. Just like all functions, our say hello function also has its own scope. It doesn't have any access to the instance we created since it was defined outside its function body. When we call a function that is defined as a class attribute through an instance, Python automatically passes a reference to the same instance as the first argument to the function. You should specify a parameter name in the definition of the function to capture this automatically passed reference to the object. Here, we use the name self. This is just a convention, you may use any variable name instead of self. Now, within the function body, we have a handle to the instance object and the variable self. Another interesting thing is the change in the type of this function object. If you look at the type of say hello function using the class, it's a regular function. If we create an object of our class and look at the same function using this object, it's a bound method. Memory address that you see is that of the instance using which we called the method. Method is bound to that instance. So essentially, it's like calling the say hello function in my class and passing the object. You may use the built-in type function to verify the difference in types of function and bound method. Just to be clear, the function and method that you see as the output of calling the type function are string representations of the actual types. The actual types are defined in the types module. So the type of a function is function type, and that of a bound method is method type. The purpose of automatically injecting bound objects is to provide the method a handle to the object's namespace. Here, we are defining instance methods set name and greet. They are called instance methods because the first parameter in their definition is self. This means they are intended to be called using an instance of the my class. Within the body of the method set name, we are creating an attribute name on the instance. Within the body of the method greet, we are using this name attribute to print a greeting message. So the user of this class is supposed to call the set name method first, and then the greet method. Otherwise, we will get an attribute error when we try to access the name attribute. Note the function definition of set name, it takes two arguments. When we call it through the object, we only need to pass the value for the name parameter, and the value for self is automatically injected by Python. If you check the object's dictionary after calling the method, you will see the attribute there. Also, we can access the name attribute within the greet function. Since it's stored in the bound object's dictionary, we use the dot notation to access it through self.